A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie tank, this one is part 42, working on the first of the wheel sets. In the previous episode I showed how badly made the wheels were with a random collection of Allen grub screws on the outside of the wheel instead of the inside, and here you see an image of that. I cleaned up the top surface of the wheel and applied a copious amount of JB Weld, and now 24 hours later this JB Weld has set. And now I need to clean off most of this JB Weld that I applied, and this is plan A. I'm changing the jaws in my chuck for the outside jaws so I can hold the entire wheel in the chuck. Nothing difficult worth mentioning here, you just take out the old jaws by rotating the chuck key and then you fit the new ones in the same order, one, two, three. The numbers are marked on the chuck and they're also marked on the jaws so you can't really get it wrong. The problem is, owing to the crank pin sticking out, I can't really hold much of the wheel in the chuck. This is the other wheel at the other end. It's being supported by a life centre in the tailstock. This allows me to manually rotate the wheel and I have a parting tool in the tool post which is cleaning off all the surplus JB Weld. This seemed like a good idea, but of course I can only go part of the way round because the crank pin once again is in the way. And furthermore, this is the rear wheel set. The crank pin on the centre wheel set is just too long for me to hold the wheel in the chuck anyway. The only way I could support the wheel would be to make a special, very long centre to go into the main chuck, and then as you see here, use a live centre in the tailstock. After much toing and froing, this is as far as I got. I really don't think I'm going to live that long to get through this job doing it in this manner. So once again, it's time to enlist the help of my Proxon motor tool fitted with the flapper wheel, and this easily removes the JB weld and deposits it as a fine dust all over the wheel. So don't forget when you're doing jobs like this, wear a breathing mask. The axles stick out slightly proud of the wheel, and this is what's meant to happen with a locomotive. But to get rid of the random array of grub screws, I need to grind the axle down to the level of the wheel. And I will end up with a flat surface. But doing this using a flapper wheel was taking far too long. To speed up the job, I decided to use my Proxon angle grinder, and here, as you can see, it's removing quite a lot more of the steel axle. The angle grinder, by the way, isn't fitted with a cutting disc, it's fitted with a flapper wheel, but it's quite a large, flat, multi-layered flapper wheel, and it makes short work of the job of levelling the axle with the front of the wheel. Here I'm starting to get somewhere. You can still see the marks in the wheel, very unsightly, and one of the grub screws, but at least they're now full of JB Weld. Here's the before shot, and here's the after shot. As you can see, it looks a good bit better. I turned the wheel over and started on the other side, same principle, but without putting it in the lathe and without using the flapper wheel, I went straight to the angle grinder. As far as electric tools go, I really do like this one. It's very, very controllable. I have a full-size angle grinder and that's a lot more vicious, but nowhere near as controllable as this. And the other good thing about this Proxon angle grinder fitted with the flapper wheel is that it leaves a good finish. And in this clip, once again, I'm working with the flapper wheel in the Proxon motor tool. Here, I'm using my finger to just check that everything's flat and it's not quite, so I'll continue. Even though the skin on my fingers is quite thick because using steam engines, I do burn my fingers a lot. My sense of touch is extremely sensitive and I can feel blemishes that I can't even see. This actually looks okay, but at the right hand side, the axle is still above the wheel. And that's why I applied so much JB Weld. As an indication as to when the axle is flush with the wheel, there should be no JB Weld other than the JB Weld in the holes where the grub screws are. The axle eventually became just as flat as the front of the wheel. Usually, in the end of railway locomotives, is a shallow centre. But as I've removed quite a lot of material from the end of the axle, all I have now is a small hole. And that's why I'm using a centre drill in a small electric drill to drill the hole a bit deeper and put a chamfer on the end of it. Don't go mad, it's very easy to drill the hole too deep. I think this is about right and it should look okay when it's painted. Did I mention painting? Yes, it's wheel painting time and for this job I'm using my wheel painting jig that I made. I recommend that you make one of these. This is for 5 inch gauge or 3.5 inch gauge wheels 
and I need to put some blocks on the top of it for seven and a quarter inch gauge wheels. And this jig makes wheel painting really easy. I'm going to be using some etching primer for this to start with. Before you start, don't forget to shake the aerosol for at least two minutes to mix the paint. I sprayed some of this paint into the cap of the aerosol can. And in this clip, as you can clearly see, I'm painting the front of the wheel, as well as any other part of the wheel where the paint is missing. This etching primer dries quite quickly, so after a while, I gave it another coat. I can still see some slight depressions where the grub screws are. But I'm not worried about this. If you watch the next episode, I'll show you what I did. After painting one side, I simply turned over the wheel in the jig and painted the other side. And in case you've never seen any of my videos before, why am I using grey etching primer? That's because the etching primer contains an acid that eats into the surface of the metal. And that's why etching primer generally sticks to metal much better than ordinary paint. It also sticks to brass, but not quite as well as it does to steel and cast iron. Progress so far. This is only the first wheel set, and this is when I applied the JB Weld. And this is what it looks like now. I've put a spot of etching primer over the places on the wheel where there was a grub screw. When this paint is set, it will be a bit thicker in this area, and once I rub it off, the wheel should look OK. In this clip I'm removing some paint that I accidentally painted round the edge of the wheel. At this stage I also noticed that there was some bare metal showing on the spokes, so I'm touching them in with the etching primer. Here I'm really trying not to get too carried away. And that's it for Boxing Day 2020. And now as it rapidly approaches 2021 I'd like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.